We're good, we're good. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the One Tribe podcast with myself, Coach Naka. No guest today. Um, so I'm on, I would say, day seven of my home quarantine. And uh, if you haven't heard, I tested positive for the one said coronavirus. So guys, I tested positive on Saturday. Unfortunately, I took a test. Um, I was feeling not sick, guys. Um, uh, had a bit of a headache and body aches. And I'll be straight up honest with you, the paranoia got to me because living here in uh, Dubai, the, the cases have been going sky high rocket, like mental for the last uh, month. And I've known of probably six people, um, acquaintances that have contracted Corona, all fine by the way. Um, and there's been people uh, come in and out of the establishment that they're f- after the fact we found out that they um, have contracted coronavirus from from where no one really knows. But um, yeah, paranoia got to me. So I took myself down to the testing center. As I said, I was fine. No other symptoms. A um, bit of few body aches and, and a dull headache. And uh, it dr- went through the drive through center and um, got myself tested. And later on that day, found out that I was negative via a text message. Sorry, negative, positive via text message. And um, that's where this all started. So um, that's, that's pretty much where I have been all week. I've been at home. Um, I feel 100%. I've been training every day. I've been eating every day. I think more of the, um, the mind fuck was reading that I had it. Um, so that sort of threw me off obviously. Um, but you know, considering how I'm feeling, I feel 100% and yeah, I'm not showing any other symptoms. Am I one of these asymptomatic people? Or maybe, maybe he's not. Um, let's go back to the end of March, start of April. We went into lockdown. We just come off the beaches with our boot camps and probably a week after that I started to get really sick. Um again you got to remember this was probably the the kickoff of COVID-19 so nobody really knew what was going on. They were, they had strict rules here in Dubai that if you hadn't traveled or come back from um anywhere around the world you couldn't get tested. So I got I started to feel pretty sick um and again, it started with a fucking headache, body aches, and I'm thinking cold and flu, like everybody else, I guess, who's contracted this thing. And then it escalated by day five, day six. I started with the fevers and um, like I was like soaking my bed out, like drenching it with um, the sweats. And then um, this lasted a total of 16 days. So I did have a, I, I did have a call with the doctor um, during that time. And you gotta remember at that time back then, it was all, it was all we were seeing on media. Um, it was just getting hammered into us that if you're going to get this thing, you're going to pretty much die. So the anxiety, which was going through me at the time, not knowing if that's what I had or what was going on, but I was pretty sure, you know, everything I was reading, all the symptoms I felt was, uh, you know, spot on. So, um, the heightened fear back then was mental for me. And uh, I probably accelerated everything um, times 10, you know? So anyway, um, this is in the start of April. Speak to a doctor and they say, look, everything you're going through sounds like you've got it. So you just probably need to um, ride this out because if you want me to do something, I can only call like an ambulance um, to your place if you need it but I would suggest against it because if you get plucked out of your house, um, you'll be in hospital for the next four to five weeks or even longer because that's where you need to be um, in incubated with everyone else who is coming down with this thing. So I was like, no, thanks. I stayed at home. We're on lockdown anyway. And I wrote it out. So 16 days later, I start to feel good. Um, and 
the rest is history, right? So, right. Now we're coming to last Saturday. I get tested. I pop positive. Now, whether my body built up antibodies or, or what, um, and that's why I feel the way I do now, um, I won't know. But what I do know, it did say positive and I've just got to wear the 14-day quarantine and see it through. And uh, I'm thankful that I don't have any um, other symptoms, you know what I mean? So this is a good thing. And another good thing is that 37 people on the back of my result got tested because obviously what I do for a living, um, working in the gym and whatnot, um, and everyone came up negative, which is awesome as well. So now this is why I wanted to do this podcast. So that's where my current status is. I have tested positive for coronavirus and I'm in home isolation. Now let's go back to Sunday when I had to tell everybody that uh, I was negative. Uh, I was positive. Sorry. I keep saying fucking negative. Um, let's go back to the day that I had to tell everyone I was positive. Now I did the right thing. I contacted everybody uh, by phone call and then put a group together of everyone that um, I work with and the extended people, you know what I mean? And said, guys, that's uh, unfortunately I've tested positive. Now you need to do yourself the favor and obviously go and test um, just for safety. You know, you, you just want to, for that peace of mind. So Everyone within the next 12 hours after that got tested and within two days got their results and everyone was negative. Now, that's not to say that everybody will be negative. You might get symptoms later down the line, but for now, with what, seven, eight days later, people are sweet and going back to their regular lives, which is good. So that's a good thing. Um, uh, so that was, that was a big relief off my shoulders because obviously reading the text message when I did, I felt like it, it drops you down a couple of pegs, you know what I mean? And um, you're like, fuck, all right, well, got to deal with it. And I'm, I'm a pretty um, honest bloke to myself. I'm like, okay, that's just something you got to do um, and make sure you obviously tell everybody and just be responsible there. Obviously told the gym and whatnot. Now, here comes the downside of obviously being honest and um, telling the, telling the truth out there, which I had to, this is, this is a, the responsibility I have to, and a duty of care I have for others that I need to obviously tell them is the backlash. I was not expecting that I got um, not from intimate like members and, and friends, but the extended public. And um, I wasn't ready for it and I was not expecting it, but fucking, it, it came and it came hard. So uh, let's fast forward to Sunday afternoon after the words got out. Um, I put it up on my Instagram saying, yep, which I, you know, for me, I'm an open book. I don't really need to be ashamed of it. I don't know how the fuck I got it. Could happen to anyone. It is happening to fucking anyone. And I just happen to be one of those people. So I did, I put that up on my Instagram I, and for, for people that I don't have the phone numbers of or who may have come in contact with me, over the weekend, um, on the Friday morning or whatever, you know, guys, if I don't have your numbers, look, I've come, I have tested positive. So please, you know, do yourselves a favor just for safety, get tested. You're more than likely going to be okay. But that's what I put out. And, um, I wasn't expecting what was to come next. So I had a lot of, um, the backlash, not personally to myself, but a, a lot of people are attacking the gym and the gym management saying, you know, messaging them, emailing them, saying they wanted to um, basically cancel their memberships to the gym. Now one of your trainers has tested positive. Um, can they get a, um, a refund? If they have to get tested now, can they, will the gym be paying for it? Um, people were calling for me to be banned from the gym. Um, what else? I had messages, screenshotting um, other platforms of my business saying we're irresponsible, that I was irresponsible, that you've, you know, you know it just it, along the lines of that. Now, I wasn't expecting that, as I said, like it came to a shock and it made me, it did make me feel like shit um, for a couple of days because I was like, fuck, I've done everything in my power to keep everyone safe. And I, and I do um, 
do that on a daily basis too. Like I, I was getting, I was getting it from a few angles saying, you know, you and your clients, you and your members don't wear masks ever anytime that you train. And, and look, the, the, the bottom line was I've just gone off the adherence of what the government was putting out. Um, and, and the whole time. So basically, you know, strenuous exercises, you didn't have to wear the mask, have it on your persons, but you didn't have to wear the mask while you were training. When you're leaving the gym, coming to the gym, wear it. But once you start training, you can keep it off, but have the mask on you at all times. And that's what we've been doing. Sterilizing the equipment, cleaning the equipment straight after use, wiping all the machines down, using towels, mate, you name it. And that was being done and has been done since the day we opened. And I was one of the main vocal people to make sure that everyone was keeping the safe, keeping to the safety guidelines. And um, as I said, that, that was a duty of care because that's what I do for a living. I'm a, I'm a trainer, I own, own um, the business and, you know, you've got to look after others as well as look after yourself. You know what I mean? So with that said, I wasn't expecting people to fire shots. Um, and it was funny because I was getting people who were firing at me that I've never crossed paths with. Like most people know I, I started the gym at four 30 in the morning and I'm, I'm done by four, three o'clock in the afternoon, um, onto my evening sessions that I do on the outside. You know what I mean? So these are people that don't know me, um, don't cross paths with me, but happen to catch wind that I did make this, make this admission on my Instagram. So it was, um, these people that were like firing hard, you know what I mean? And I, I was like, you know, as much as I didn't, as much as everything, anyone who knows me, I wanted to fire back. That's me. That's my personality. I'm a very fucking short fused person and sometimes see red before I see the clear vision. Um, but you know, this was, uh, this was my first reaction. So, um, yeah. So obviously didn't make me too, too happy. And then there, I was like, fuck, I felt ashamed for having it. You know what I mean? Um, even though that everyone had tested um, negative and everyone was safe on, on that end, uh, I felt ashamed that now, well, why did you, why did you fucking bother speaking up? Or why have you done that? You've just probably, you know, shot yourself in the foot here by, by being that person. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that now on, on the, on the podcast is that, you know, the first couple of days was hard for me to get over. Obviously nothing's wrong with me um, in terms of symptoms. I'm good. I feel like I'm in perfect health. Um, but now we're at Thursday going into the weekend. I've had obviously a, few, bit, a couple of days just to, you know, chill and um, realize that, fuck man, like it's, I found it very funny with, with the attacks. I had people calling up the gym saying, oh, you know, well, I parked my car next to his in the car park. Should I, shall I go get tested? And, you know, I had the management telling me this look, in a serious way, but also saying, look, this is the kind of shit we're dealing with. So don't be too hard on yourself because, you know, fucking hell, like that's the kind of complaints we're, we're having. So it was shit that people had done that. Um, but, you know, as I said, like this is Dubai syndrome. People have those, have those um, moments and whatever, like, I know, I know what I've done on my side and, and, you know, I've, I've done everything to keep everyone safe. Um, I was the unfortunate one to pop positive. So, um, at the same time is that I do know now why people keep this fucking quiet because people, I feel people like, uh, are ashamed to say they have tested positive, but in the, in the reality of things, you need to, you need to tell people, you need to tell people, you don't have to be vo as vocal as I was. Um, but you need to tell the people that you've been around because I've heard stories now that, you know, after putting it on my Instagram, people have messaged me that like, don't train at the gym and stuff, but just follow me on my stories and say, yeah, oh, I'm at home. I've tested positive as well. Been home for uh, 14 days now, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's unfortunate, but there's a lot more people that we then we think with the bloody thing, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, for you to make people feel that they've caught some disease that they shouldn't have, 
is awful. And this is why people are lying. And this, I guess, is why people are sending these um, positive cases further and further up each day because people are literally hiding te uh, positive tests and then going back into society when they're sick and because because of whatever stigma is attached to it. So I think that's um, a big thing to take away from this, guys. Like, if people need to tell people, that's fine. But, um, yeah, the duty of care you've got if you do test positive is so extreme because um, I've got a couple of people that I know who have had this and some of them have been like me, all good. But some of them had it a rough time and if it was anything like us I, I faced in um april when i when i like 100 had it it wasn't fun like out of 16 days 10 of those days were were hell you know what i mean and because you don't know um it's quite scary so i i wouldn't want anyone to face that um it's shit but at the same time you know i know just of uh of the establishment that i work in is that we know that people have come in and out that later on have uh, caught it um, or either had it while they were in the gym and didn't know, which is fair play as well. It's, if you don't feel sick, why would you go get tested? That's, that's the biggest thing I've taken out of this. I, I could have just done my normal uh, every cold and flu season on Saturday and just thought, fuck it. It's just, it's just that because Sunday I was normal. Um, the only reason I got tested was paranoia. I did get paranoid and you can't help it in these times, but to let the brain take over sometimes. And I'm glad I did. Um, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's lucky I did as well, you know, so it could have been, could have been a lot worse because I could have been back to work on Sunday, positive, not knowing about it and people getting sick. So it's one of those things that you've just got to be, I think, trust your gut when, um, as they say, if you feel off, stay at home, not necessarily maybe get tested straight away, but stay at home maybe for three days or two, three days, just see what eventuates out of that. And then, you know, make your mind up. You've got to, you've got to have some sort of responsibility um, with this matter. You know what I mean? So yeah, going back to um, the whole judgmental side of it. So yeah, I, I felt it firsthand. Uh, I'm sure other people have as well. Um, I had a friend call me, um, yesterday morning, a client of hers had tested positive. She does, um, sessions roaming around the city in terms of like, uh, house sessions and stuff. Uh, client's husband tested positive. Now she rang me in tears. I was like, what's wrong? She's like, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to have to get tested now. I said, look, to rule yourself out, because obviously our, our business is face to face. We work with people. So, you know ultimately we're putting ourselves out there. Um, I said, but to rule it out. So you make your uh, customers feel like safe is go and get yourself tested. Comes up negative. You're good. You know what I mean? At least you've done your part and, and that's what you have to do. And so that's what she did. Um, the wife of the husband tested negative as well, which was good. So, you know, it, it, it eliminates any doubt for anyone, um, which is the way. So just touching on that, um, you know, being a coach, you got to remember is that this is what we do for a living. I had, you know, I keep going back to being attacked online and the gym being attacked, but this is what we do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what people expect as coaches. We put ourselves out there. I know for myself, people come to me. Um, I work out of one gym. Um, people come to me on a daily basis from 5 a.m. all the way to 3 p.m. And so I don't know where these people have been during the day. I don't know where the kids have been during the day. Like it's, it's, and I, nor should like, I have to worry to ask, but like one of the, one of the attacks that came was, you know, who knows where he has spread it now and, and how far this has gone. And I'm like, well, if you fucking think about it is that I stay in one place, people come to me. So wherever I've picked it up from, maybe I picked it up from touching my lift every day I catch my lift down to the basement. I touched it. Might've touched my face. Bob's your uncle. You've got the virus. It doesn't necessarily mean it was picked up from the gym. You know what I mean? Or so it's just like the small mindedness I saw on Sunday and Monday um, from, from people was amazing. Like it just showed me 
Dubai syndrome is real. People are just consumed in their bubble. Um, so, you know, I don't know what the answers are for this thing. I just know that you've just got to, you've got to obviously be careful, um, you know, but you've also got to live your life. I don't know how these lower income workers um, are taking 14 days off. Like, I know we have to by like by law, the isolation period is 14 days, but it made me think after, you know, speaking to the uh, health authority um, was like, how many people actually do in the 14 days and then reintroducing themselves back in to society. So there must be plenty of people testing positive and just keeping it to themselves and just getting back out there because they have to, because of work or, you know, it's not the best time to, to be bloody getting tested positive right now because like, you know, companies are looking for any excuse to, to trim the fat and um, you know, that'd probably be one of them. So yeah, just wanted to make this podcast because uh, obviously I've got fuck all else to do um, right now, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a big eye opener for me um, in terms of how people act. I get the paranoia over it. I really do. Um, but I also, you got to put it out there that the circle is getting smaller, especially here in the, um, the Emirates. Um, you know, it's every other person seems to have contracted right now. So, and let me just touch on, it is cold and flu season. We're amongst it now. It's getting cooler here, change of weather, climate change. Um, you know, people will get the, the, the flu. So that's the other thing now. It's not like, you know, everything we've been told to do as humans, um, push through the sniffles, you know, your sore throat, right. Take lozenges, go to work, you know, harden up. We can't do that anymore. You can't take the risk. You know what I mean? And that's like every, anyone who knows me, that's me to a T like, ah, oh, you got the sniffles, right. Wipe them up and take a panel and go to work. Um, you can't take that risk anymore and you can't just push through it because it's like, if this is not the flu and it is Corona, it's going to be one or the other. Um, you know, you don't want to spread the flu anyway, but yeah, the last thing you want to do is have Corona and be positive And for five days contemplating whether it is, you don't want to second guess it, you know what I mean? So it's just a word word of advice, I guess now, you know, it's just if you've got those small symptoms and it is the flu, cool, stay at home. Three, four days, stay at home till it, you know, bowls over and then you're sweet. Um, But if it doesn't, it's going to, it's going to rapidly turn into something more and that's when you're going to know, okay, well, at least I'm at home or isolated because there's not much else you can do. Um, Even if you test positive, you've got to be at home anyway. Right. So um, that's my advice to anyone is just to listen to your body. Now we can't take the risks of pushing through things anymore. Um, We've got to be safe. We've got to look, we've got to think about others um, around us. It's not about us anymore. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, that's my, my, my two cents about that is just, um, really start to lock it in. If, if, if you feel off, take a day or two off from whatever you're doing from the office in, and these are the things we've just got to do. This is the times we're living in. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but you know, to, to slow this bloody thing down until there is a vaccine, um, you know, they're just going to have to do these things. So look, that's my story. That's I've, I wish I had more of a, corona update but i don't because i feel fucking absolutely normal um and yeah uh, i've got what seven days left stuck in the house and um then i'm good to get back to it so anyway um what's out there and uh i hope everyone stays safe and uh what else that's about it we'll be back in uh back to work in a week's time and uh if not follow me on instagram follow my work page streetwise uae beatbox will be back uh the week after next and uh yeah this is the one try podcast coach naka over and out